Greetings, Earthlings. Today I'm back with a review of the brand new flagship microphone from Lewitt. That microphone is... My ability to fall out of the chair truly is impressive. <laughs> the microphone is the LCT1040. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you $3,500. Like always, I'll throw some links in the description down below. Also, in the sake of full disclosure, I do need to let you know that Lewitt sent me this microphone free of charge for the sake of making this review. With that out of the way, for the majority of this review, I will be running the microphone directly into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen, recording 24-bit 48 kilohertz. My gain is set at around 1 o'clock, and I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may have to boost it a little bit in post, so check the doobly-doo to see what I diddly did. And a little bit later in this video, I will be running the microphone through a higher-end interface, as well as some higher-end outboard preamps if that interests you. But now let's talk about what comes in the box and you know I can't throw it because it knocked me out of my chair so I have a stand-in box. As you saw it comes in a massive storage case which will really protect the microphone. You get two zippered packets the first one being for the cable the microphone bag and some extra elastics for the shock mount. The other one stores the standard documentation, some recall sheets, and a pen. Then you'll of course get the microphone. You'll get a dust cover to protect the capsule when it's on the stand. You will get a shock mount which does come with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. And you will get a firm mount hallelujah which also comes with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter. You will get a magnetic pop filter which clips right onto the shock mount a proprietary cable to run from the microphone to the power supply. Then you'll get the power supply and the controller as well as the power cable for it. And you'll get a sticker! Rip, rip, ah shoot, heck! Then as far as the build quality, I have zero complaints about this thing. It feels extremely robust and extremely well put together. It has an all metal body as well as a firm metal mesh grill which does not have any give to it. On the front you do have this see through viewing panel so you can see the tube when it's lit up. As we move around the microphone there are no buttons or switches but on the rear there is a logo that lights up and on the bottom you will find the 10 pin port to connect this to the power supply. All of the dials on the power supply are extremely well attached. There is no wobble to them and they are a joy to use. Very smooth but they do have little notches that make it easier to recall settings. And all of the XLR ports and proprietary ports are firm and have very little wiggle or wobble to them. And if it matters to you this microphone is assembled in China. Then we get to the power supply and this is a chunky boy. It is very large, it is very heavy, but it feels incredibly robust. The first thing that we have are three lights to tell you that everything is functioning. You have power, the microphone is connected, and the microphone is operational. Then we have a four-way switch to switch between the four different voicings for the tube microphone setting. We have the high-pass filter selection switch to go between linear, 40 hertz, 80 hertz, or 120 hertz high-pass filters the attenuation dial to engage a negative 6, negative 12, or negative 24 decibel pad. Then you have a massive dial to switch between the tube and the FET circuit. It does have little notches at 100%, 75%, and 50%, so you're more easily able to recall settings that you have during a session, but you are able to go anywhere in between. Then you'll find a massive dial for the polar pattern and you have the exact same functionality as the other dial. It has notches at every single polar pattern so it's easier to recall, but you are able to go anywhere in between and get the exact kind of polar pattern that you want. And the last thing that you have on the top is a reverse switch in case you want the rear of the microphone to now be the front of the polar patterns. Then when we look at the rear of the power supply, you will find a power port as well as the on off switch. You'll then find the XLR port to output the mix to your interface. This is the XLR port you need to use if you want to use the tube circuit. Then you'll find a second XLR port which allows you to output 100% of the FET circuit to your interface at all times. You'll find a 10 pin port to connect the microphone to the power supply 
and an XLR port to connect the power supply to the controller. Then on the top portion of this device, which is the controller, you will find a button to turn on or off the light on the rear of the microphone or put the microphone to sleep. And then you have another XLR port, which allows you to connect the controller to the power supply in case you want to have the microphone in another room and control it from the room that you're in. Then on the front of this device, you will find three more lights, power to let you know it's on, remote to let you know that the remote is connected, and microphone to let you know the microphone is connected, and a button which allows you to detach the controller from the power supply in case you do want to run the controller in a different room from the microphone. Then as far as the specs of this mic, it has an omnidirectional, a wide cardioid, a cardioid, a super cardioid, and a figure eight polar pattern, and pretty much anything in between, a frequency response of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz, a sensitivity of approximately negative 35 dB, a self noise of 10 dBA for FET, 13 dBA for tube, a max SPL of 137 dB, the tube that it uses is an E88CC or an 8DJ8, and although I'd love to show you every single frequency response graph for this thing, there are just too many, so I'm going to go ahead and throw a link to Lewitt's page for this microphone. And if you're a massive nerd like me and it interests you, I highly recommend checking out all the different polar patterns on the different tube voicings so you can see what kind of different sounds you can get out of this thing. I know that it's blasphemous to handhold a microphone of this quality, but I'm going to do it and we're going to walk through all of the different polar patterns now. First up, we are on the omnidirectional mode, moving around to 90 degrees, continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear, continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, there you go, and then rotating and ending at the front of the mic. Now we are on the wide cardioid mode, moving around to the first 90 degree angle, there we are, continuing around the microphone to 180 degrees, this is the rear, continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we are, and then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now we are on the standard cardioid mode, moving around to 90 degrees, here's the first side, continuing around to 180 degrees, here's the rear of the mic, then continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we are, and then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now we are on the super cardioid polar pattern, moving around to 90 degrees, here's the side, Continuing around to 180 degrees, here's the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, there we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. And lastly, we have the figure eight mode moving around to 90 degrees, the first dead area. Continuing around the microphone to 180 degrees, here's the rear lobe of sensitivity. Continuing around the microphone to the second null area and then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. There we are. Now let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. 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 Now I am right on top of the microphone on the warm tube setting to really exaggerate the proximity effect, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about three inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth and here is how it's sounding. About one foot away from the mic, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the LCT 1040. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for you naughty naughty gaming folk out there, now I am typing on the sad W keys and the space bar. Now here is how the microphone sounds on the cardioid polar pattern, warm tube setting in a well-treated room. And now here is how the microphone sounds in a completely untreated room on the super cardioid polar pattern, 100% tube and the warm setting. Next, I want to see how effective the provided shock mount is, so I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm.
Now because I'm annoying and I want to be thorough, I'm going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any resonant frequencies. I do want to say do not try this at home because it could damage your mic. Now I want to walk through all the different voicings that are available on this microphone. So currently I have the tube FET circuit set to 100% tube. I am currently on the clear voicing and here is how it sounds. Make sure to listen to the top end because that's where the majority of the alterations are going to happen. Now we are on the warm setting and this is one of my favorites because this really tames a lot of those upper frequencies. It pulls those down and makes it a much more neutral sounding microphone and I just adore how it sounds on this setting. Now we are on the dark setting and as you can hear it really rolls off a lot of those upper frequencies and again I absolutely adore this setting. I think using this in conjunction with a little bit of the FET circuit, let me go ahead and turn that up a little bit. Now I have the FET circuit set to 25%, 75% tube, so you're able to get that warmth, that darkness, but you're able to get a little bit of that articulation from the FET circuit. I think that's amazing. Let me go ahead and roll it back. Now we are 100% tube dark again. And the last tube setting that we have is the saturated mode. It gives you a little bit more in the low end and you still get a bit of that top end, but it's not as clear as the clear setting. There you go, those are all the tube settings. Now let's switch to FET. And finally, we are on 100% FET and this is how it's sounding. You should hear that typical Lewitt, very bright sound, very articulate, very fast sounding. Just listen to that fast t t Captures that really well. So that is the FET circuit if you want to use that. Personally, when I'm using this microphone, I'm almost always going to be on the tube side and maybe bringing in a bit of that FET circuit, but I'm getting a tube microphone because I want that tube coloration. It is nice to have that FET circuit if you want to use it though. Now I am back right on top of the microphone to really exaggerate that proximity effect so that we can test the high pass filter. Currently the microphone is set 100% tube on the warm setting with the high pass in linear mode and here's how it's sounding. Now I've turned on the 40 hertz high pass filter and you shouldn't hear any kind of change to the tone of my voice, but this will clean up any kind of extremely low rumble in your recording. Now I've switched on the 80 hertz high pass filter and it does start to affect the tone of my voice a little bit. This would be for more extreme cases if you have a very deep voice, but if you have a higher pitch voice like mine, I think it gets a little bit aggressive. This does work really well on the electric guitar though. And finally, we have the 120 hertz high pass filter and here is how it sounds. Very aggressive rolling off a lot of that low end, going to be for very specific use cases, but there you go, that's how it sounds. Now I want to include a very quick sample of how this microphone performs running through a higher end interface. So I am running the FET mode out to two different interfaces. The first one being the Focusrite 18i20, gain set at one o'clock. The second output running to the Universal Audio X8 and my gain is set at 31 decibels. And once I have them on my computer, I will make sure that the recordings are level matched and I will also be switching back and forth between them so that you're able to hear the difference that a higher end interface with better preamps and better A to D converters has on this microphone's recording and the quality. I think that should be enough rambling, so there you go. Let's do another test now. And I also wanted to include a quick sample of how this microphone sounds running through some higher end outboard preamps. So again, I am on the FET mode and I am running that circuit out to two preamps. The first one is the WA73EQ, which is a 1073 style preamp. I am bypassing the EQ section. My gain is set at 40 dB, so I am getting a little bit of coloration from the pre's. Then I am running through the Universal Audio LA610. I am bypassing the compressor and the EQ. My level or my gain is set at plus 10, so we're getting maximum tube saturation or coloration. And my level is set at 2.5 on that pre. I am running line level plus 4 dBU into the Universal Audio X8. So they are going through the exact same converters. And I will have been switching back and forth so that you're able to hear the difference in sound. I know it would be more valuable to do this on every single application. 
that would be too time consuming. So this is as good as I can do in a reasonable amount of time. That should be enough. Let's do more tests, I think. I'm sure there's more to do. We'll see. And now, like always, we're going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a couple of other microphones on the market so we can see how it stacks up against the competition. And I do want to point out that we are running through the Universal Audio X8 for this because I imagine if you're looking at a $3,500 microphone, chances are you will be running through a higher end interface as well. Like always, we'll start on the mic that we're reviewing. This is the LCT 1040, 6 inches off, gain at 35 dB, 100% tube on the warm setting on the cardioid polar pattern, and here is how it's sounding. Let's jump to the first mic. And the first microphone is a little bit of a meme. This is the Neewer NW700. This costs about $20. I am 6 inches off, my gain is at 30 decibels, and here is how this sounds. Back again for a second comparison, and here is how the 1040 sounds. Let's jump to the next one. Next, we are on the Audio Technica AT2020. This goes for about $100. I am 6 inches off. My gain is set at 35 decibels, and here is how this sounds compared to the 1040. Let's do more. Third time is a charm. Here is how the 1040 sounds. Nothing has changed. Let's jump to the next one. Now we are on the Neat King BV2. This goes for between $170 and $180. I am 6 inches off. My gain is still at 35 dB. Make sure to check the lower third. And here is how this sounds compared to the 1040. Let's do more comparisons. If you are crazy enough to listen to all of these comparisons, I wish you Godspeed. This is the 1040. Let's jump to the next mic. Now we are on the Rode NT1. This goes for about $270. I am 6 inches off. My gain is still at 35 dB. And here is how this sounds compared to the 1040. Let's jump back to the 1040 and do a ton more of these comparisons. Just as a palate cleanser, here is the 1040. Let's jump to the next microphone. Next, we are on the Lewitt LCT 440 Pure. This goes for about $270. Again, I am 6 inches off. My gain is still at 35 dB. And here is how this compares to its biggest brother, the LCT 1040. Let's do more tests. For a sixth, com sixth, sixth comparison, this is the LCT 1040. I don't know why that's hard to say. This is the LCT 1040. Here's how it sounds. Next mic. Now we are on the Lewitt LCT 840. This is another tube microphone from Lewitt. I am six inches off. My gain is at 35 dB. I am on the cardioid mode. No pad, no high pass filter engaged. And if I did not mention it, this goes for $1,000. Here is how it sounds. Let's jump to its big brother and then do more comparisons. Just for good measure, here is how the LCT 1040 sounds. Let us jump to another microphone. Now I am on the Neumann TLM 103. I am 6 inches off. My gain is still at 35 dB. This goes for about $1,100. And here is how this compares to the LCT 1040. Let's do more comparisons. In case you forgot how I sound on this microphone, I don't see how you could. This is the LCT 1040. Let's jump to another microphone. Now we are on the Lewitt LCT 940, which is another tube microphone from Lewitt. I am 6 inches off. My gain is still at 35 dB. Cardioid mode, no pad, no filters engaged, 100% on the tube setting. This goes for $1,700, I believe. And here is how this sounds compared to its bigger brother, which is twice the price. Twice the price, the LCT 1040. Let's do more comparisons. We have a lot more to go, I think. But this is the LCT 1040. Nothing has changed. Next mic. Next up, we are on the Telefunken TF51, which goes for about $1,900. Six inches off cardioid mode, gain at 35 dB. And here is how this sounds compared to the LCT 1040. Let's jump back to the 1040 and do more comparisons. How many more of these do we have to do? I have no idea. I am going to do a bunch. But this is how the LCT sounds. 1040 sounds. Next comparison thing. Next, we are on the Telefunken TF47, which is more of a mid-forward sound compared to the TF51. This also goes for $1,900. I am 6 inches off. 
cardioid polar pattern and my gain is set at 35 db check the lower third and let's jump to the tf no i'm sorry not the tf the lct 1040 and do more comparisons too many t's and f's and all of the letters and numbers okay next i don't know if i need this but this is how the lct 1040 sounds nothing has changed everything's the same check the lower third next mic now we are on the Manly Reference Cardioid, which goes for about $3,300. I am six inches off of this thing. My gain is set at 27 dB. I do not have the pad engaged. And here is how this sounds compared to a microphone that costs $200 more. Manly Reference Cardioid versus the 1040. Let's jump back and do a couple more comparisons, I think. I'm Ron Burgundy. I believe this is the second to last microphone, but normally it would be the last microphone. We have a very special final microphone, but this is the LCT 1040. Here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the penultimate mic. Now we're on the Neumann U87AI, which goes for about $3,600. I am on the cardioid mode, no pad, no filters, six inches off. My gain is at 30 dB and here is how this sounds compared to a microphone that is $100 cheaper, the LCT 1040. I've been doing so many of these, I forgot what it was. We have one more mic to do. Can you guess what it is? Let's jump back to the 1040 and then compare it. I'm going to stop and give you a quick round of applause because you have done it. You have made it to the last microphone. Well done. Good on you. This is the LCT 1040. Let's jump to the final microphone. Why am I acting so weird? I don't know. Send help, please. And finally, to close out the comparison, we are on the Neumann U67 reissue. This goes for about $7,200. That's a lot of damage. I am six inches off. Cardioid mode, no pads, no filters, nothing engaged. Gain at 33 dB. And here is how this compares to a microphone that's about half the price, the LCT 1040. There you go. Those are all the comparisons that I have for you today, but I would love to hear from you in the comments down below. Which of these microphones was your favorite? Tell me down there and let's jump to the music test. <laughs> I've got a million things I need to say I've gotta get them off my chest But really I'm just trying to find something to sing about Cause I've got a thousand modes I've gotta cycle through So we can find out which of these modes sounds the best to you 
And did you think that we were done and that was the end of the phrase? No, cause we're still testing fat. Hey, I didn't really glide down as much on that one. That was pretty cool. That was pretty good. If I do say so myself on the 50th time of doing it, that's the secret. I do this over and over and over again to try to get a tolerable take. <laughs> and these are the best that I do. <laughs> so let's go to the conclusion because this went on way too long. Because I just wanted to give you at least a quick sample of each of the modes. <laughs> Stop talking, Bandrew. Hey, I know the video's long and all, but it's time to wake up. This is no time for sleepy. It is conclusion time. And as far as analog microphones go, I think this is the most versatile mic that I've ever used. And as far as pros, the first thing does have to be that versatility, thanks to the multiple tube voicings and the ability to mix between the tube circuit and the FET circuit, it gives you nearly infinite options to get exactly the sound that you're looking for, and I have found it incredibly useful when doubling up guitar or vocals to be able to use different tube voicings or roll in a bit more FET if I want a little bit more articulation. Also, for a tube microphone, a self-noise of 13 dBA is incredibly impressive. The pop filter and the shock mount are pretty darn respectable at their jobs as well. The build quality of the microphone, the power supply, and the storage box are all insane, and I have no concerns about this falling apart anytime soon. I feel as though it can take quite a beating. And finally, the inclusion of a small firm mount is just amazing, because miking up my isolation cab with this shock mount would have been impossible, and I think that's going to come in handy for a lot of people, and it's something that a lot of companies overlook. They don't include small mounts, they just include massive shock mounts. So this is just something that Lewitt didn't need to include, but because they did, it makes my job easier. And when I'm paying $3,500 for a microphone, I want to make sure the microphone is making my job easier. So well done, Lewitt, on that. And then as far as cons, over the last month and a half of use, I have been trying to find any flaws with this microphone, anything that I think are drawbacks of this microphone, and I legitimately cannot think of any. But I do have two FYIs for you. If you're using the magnetic pop filter, just be careful because you will knock it off if it's just sitting around in your studio. When I have been making videos and I've had it over here, I have knocked it off countless times. Secondly, this little window showing you the tube is the perfect place to show you how much you actually spit on your microphone. So you will be cleaning that off daily because it will disgust you how much spit unintentionally makes it onto your microphone. <laughs> it's just, it's so gross. And now what are my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone? On the electric guitar, I think you're able to get some really great tones out of it. The low end is not overly loose or muddy, but I do think it benefits from engaging that 80 hertz or 120 hertz high pass filter. Just cleans up the low end and sounds awesome. The mids don't come across too forward or too scooped, but for my personal preference, I would have liked a little bit more mids for this application. And then when you get to the top end, you get so much top end information on the clear tube or the FET setting. Not my personal favorite. I personally liked the warm setting or the dark setting because that tames a lot of the top end and it makes it a little bit more pleasing. Next up on the acoustic guitar, I think I captured some of my favorite acoustic sounds with this microphone. The low end is nice and full, but it doesn't come across as muddy. The mids are so clear and articulate, they are beautiful. But the top end is what really shines on the acoustic. On the tube clear setting or on the warm setting with a little bit of the FET rolled in, you get this amazingly clear top end that's articulate and detailed, but it doesn't come across as too harsh. It is just incredible on the acoustic. And my favorite thing on the acoustic was doing a second take, but using a different voicing and panning each of those hard left and hard right. It just gives you this incredibly wide sound and it doesn't come across as too boring because you have two different microphone sounds. Really incredible and I loved it on the acoustic. It was so good. 
Next up for singing, again, I thought it was outstanding for this application. The low end just gets out of the way, but I'm sure you're still going to EQ it. That 80 or 120 hertz high pass filter will come in handy. The mids were clear. They weren't over boosted. They weren't scooped. They weren't nasally. Just amazing midsection for vocals. And then the top end is what Lewitt does best. Really bright, really clear, really airy sounding. I do prefer all of the tube settings over the FET circuit because I found that it smoothed out a lot of the upper frequencies. And for singing, I thought tube clear was awesome, but I really thought that warm with a bit of that FET rolled in was the sweet spot. I also really enjoyed the dark mode because that just made it dark and sultry and vintage sounding just incredible. And again, just like the acoustic, I loved doubling up a vocal, keeping them both centered, and dropping one of them by 15, 20 dB, but using a different voicing made it sound huge and gave you a bit of that chorus effect. Really works wonderfully for singing. And finally for spoken word, I think this thing can offer some amazing tones for that application. First thing I'll say is it's no secret that I find a lot of Lewitt's microphones a bit too bright for my liking. And for higher pitched and brighter voices like mine, that warm and dark mode are just amazing because you're still getting a little bit of that airiness, that brightness that Lewitt is known for, but it's not coming across over boosted. It's not over exaggerating those harsher frequencies in your voice. And now I'm going to sound like a broken record because the low end is controlled and that 40 and 80 hertz high pass filter are incredibly useful. The midsection is clear and I love that it doesn't make you sound overly nasally because I already have a nasally voice and this doesn't make that worse. Also, you can get that really bright Lewitty sound if you want that tube clear mode, which I just engaged, or if you want to roll that back, you can go warm or you can go dark and it's just amazing. Tames all those higher frequencies. So you have a wide birth, a, a wide range of sounds to pick from to fit your voice. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Lewitt LCT 1040? Absolutely I would. Now to be clear, I'm not suggesting that everybody go out and buy one of these because for a lot of people, it's going to be overkill. But if your budget allows for a $3,500 microphone and you want that Lewitt sound with an amazing set of features that makes it one of the most versatile analog microphones of all time, and you prefer the sound of the Lewitt over the competition like the Manly Reference Cardioid or the Neumann U87 AI, I think this makes an incredible studio centerpiece. That's all that I've got for you today, and I think this may be the longest video I've ever made, so I'm not going to drag on. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it, big ol' thumbs down. These people over here are amazing. Thanks to Lewitt for sending this over for review, and I will talk to you all on a later date. I love you. Bye-bye.